up potty people and welcome back to my channel so today's video is a little different so i like to do product fails videos disappointing products i regret buying videos stuff like that just kind of showcase the products that don't work out for me but today i want to switch it up and actually put those products on my face now my goal for this video is to hopefully kind of teach you guys some hacks tips tricks secrets like stuff that i would do to make things work that don't work easily like we don't all have the luxury of time if something's not working out not looking good we, you know we don't all have the time to take our makeup off and start all over so sometimes we just have to work with it and just it's just trial and error yeah if you end up liking the style of this product fails video if you want to see more like it then make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not already and turn that notification bell on to never miss an upload from me and without further ado let's put some product fails on my face and let's try to make them work so the first thing I have is an eye primer and I really try to make this a well-rounded full face of products so this is the amazing cosmetics illuminate eye primer but if you've watched my channel for a while then you'll know that I just don't do translucent eye primers to me they're so useless there's no place for them in my collection and I feel like whenever I use them I have to use so much more eyeshadow and it takes me so much longer to get the intensity that I want to cover up the discoloration and the veins and stuff and I just feel like I'm fighting a losing battle so this one is translucent but it looks purple whenever you first swatch it out so I guess this is supposed to be more for like dry mature eyelids like you know the whole illuminate thing it is smoothing like it is really softening and stuff and I, I guess it kind of does have like a, a slightly brightening effect where it is that lavender tint but number one it feels so greasy there's so much slip to it so yeah I'm not super familiar with it it's just one of those products like they're just some products that I tried that it's like mm, I'm not gonna give you a third chance like, I'm not gonna give you a second chance like I just I don't like you I don't want to use you I don't have time for it all right so these are some products I actually haven't tried yet they're just products that with history of using products of this type from this brand I just don't like them so Koki actually sent me these Arabian Knots and Pure Magic eyeshadow palettes now Koki like the pro the white pro and black pro collection eyeshadow palettes those things are amazing they're like twenty dollars and they're some of my favorite eyeshadow palettes now but i actually did expect that at all from them because the old formula like the ones in like i think there was like nine pans or 12 pans or something like that they were horrible but looking at these i was like eh, i mean they look slightly improved like they do look better but i just don't really like the color combinations so that's number one product fail but also whenever I swatch them they just don't feel the best they don't feel horrible but as far as like meeting my standards I don't really feel like they're going to but here is the pure magic palette so oh we lost one man down soldier down and then here is the <laughs> oh my god this is the other palette the Arabian Nights palette and we also just lost another man so these are just not pressed in here very well at all so i don't know that just that's a really big turn off to me and then for brushes because as i said earlier i'm gonna pull into some brushes that i absolutely hate as well these are the bh cosmetics brushes so a while back i actually picked up like three or four of the kits and their brush kits are so bad like this Studio Pro kit is a 13 piece brush set. I don't even have all the brushes. I don't even know where all of them are, but this kit is so bad. The way they blend things out, like you can see marks and it's just, it's just, it's a horrible experience across the board. And then I also have the ones from this kit. I think this is like the Rose Quartz brush kit. I don't even know if they still have this because it was so bad they discontinued it, but these are better. Like they feel better. I think I, I did talk about these in a recent disappointing product fails video that I did, but I'm actually going to put them to the test today. Let's go into the Pure Magic palette. So let's take this matte ivory shade and use that to set my eye primer. We're going to need something to set it because it's still kind of tacky and not completely dried down. So I'm gonna be going into a liquid shadow today from Koki as well. This is not like a Koki bashing video, but like I even have a coupon code with Koki. So just to show you how honest I am, like I'm not biased whatsoever. I can have a coupon code or like an affiliate link with a brand and still not like their products. Like I am not swayed at all by that kind of thing, but I have their Crystal Fusion liquid eyeshadows, which I want to like so bad. And they are pretty close to the Stila liquid shadows, but there's just a slight difference in formula. But I, I can't figure out if it's the formula or the applicator. So we're gonna get into that in just a second, but I'm gonna be working around this shade right here, which is called Astrid. Oh my God, <laughs> it makes me think of The Office. <laughs> Aster. Now I'm gonna take, let's take a pink. So let's go into that same palette and let's take this pink right here and use that as my transition shade. I should probably use tools that I know work to try to make these products that I don't have very good experiences with work better. But I just kind of wanted to just go along with the theme. A lot of us buy things that we can't return. Like if you're buying online, you can't return to the retailer or whatever, you know, 
and sometimes we just have to make things work because we spent money on them so the whole thing this video is just trying to make not so good products work for us oh i can still see all my veins in my eyelids but i mean not bad okay so i'm not really seeing what i want to use to transition into like a plum or a navy blue or whatever i want to use like i need like a medium tone shade so i'm gonna go into this rimmel magnifies reloaded palette so i'm gonna use this one in my outer v just to kind of transition into a darker shade yeah i haven't had a very good experience with rimmel eyeshadow palettes they keep sending them to me and i just it's like i i don't want them you can just see where it looks darker in some areas and lighter in others and it just it's just, it's inconsistent. I'm gonna go back into that bigger brush I used for the pink shade and just go around right top of that and try to, I don't know, just diffuse it into the pink better and not make it look so patchy, but it's still looking pretty gross. This is what I would do on my own if I came across a shadow like this that was just kind of uneven and patchy looking. So I went back into that bigger brush. Now I'm gonna go back into that brush I used for the purple with no extra product and just kind of reiterate the outer v a little bit with whatever's left over oh my god so bad okay so now let's go into the pure magic palette again i'm gonna take this shade right here now i normally don't do navy blue but i am seeing some slight unevenness with this shadow and also like it looks shiny in certain areas like it could be that illuminating eye primer but like it just looks oddly shiny so it's looking pretty harsh in the crease especially on my right side where it's not wanting to really like blend into that pink. So I'm just gonna take a little more pink on that same brush that I used with it and just go round right top in the crease where I'm seeing those blending issues and just kind of reiterate the pink and also soften out like the harshness of the blue. Oh, I'm getting sweaty. I'm starting to panic. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and move on. This looks like absolute crap right now, but I'm hoping that whenever I go into the liquid shadow, it kind of disguises and camouflages some of the wonkiness happening right now. So yeah, I'm gonna go into that liquid shadow in the shade Astrid or Astrid if you're a fan of The Office. But yeah, it definitely has a different applicator than the Stila ones, which I love the Stila applicators and just the Stila formula is just, it's so hard to beat and so hard to dupe. But this is also just a more liquidy, watery formula compared to the Stila ones and they're just, they're more sheer. Yeah, oh, we're getting some lineage happening, getting some creasing, that's fun. Yeah, can you see that? Like, it's see-through and it's patchy and it's just, it's too wet. Oh my God, that looks horrible. I'm gonna keep my eyes slightly closed and just kind of look down and keep it as flat as possible while it's drying because I don't want to get creases and stuff like that. So I'm, on the other side, I'm actually just gonna put it on the back of my hand and work with a brush. Oh, where are you? I've done all these methods before. Like I've really tried to play around and make this work. Can we see what's happening here? Can we see? The catastrophe! Going in again, I applied it directly to my eyelid. I'm just gonna go in and bounce it. Oh! <laughs> no! What is happening, Koki? Come on, man! So, what I would do if I didn't have time to take this off and start all over, and I didn't have time to reroute this train, is I'd probably just go over this after it dried with a powder shadow. So I'm gonna go back into the Arabian Nights palette, and I'm gonna take, let's take Genie, which is like a shimmery, bluish kind of shade. So we're, gonna, we're, we're trying different formulas in the palette. Probably gonna need to wet it. So I'm gonna go directly on top of that liquid shadow and just allow that to act as a base, I guess. I don't know if that's a base you really wanna be using, but again, we're, we're trying to make things work that don't work easily. And I'm just gonna bring this all the way out because I was not happy with what's going on in the outer V. So we just gonna cover it up before, after, before, after. Let's take this purple shade in the Arabian Nights palette. So this is like a, a shimmery purple. You know, I just want to kind of mix some shades and just see what we can come up with. So that actually did work out pretty well. So the shimmers aren't that bad. Again, I don't like the palettes, not because of the formula necessarily, but because of the shade selection and just the weird pairings and the weird colors in them. But there is a lot of fallout on my face. We'll, we'll clean that up later. But I mean, the shimmers they're pretty popping. So now the issue that I want to combat is to fix how cut the eyelid looks because it looks pretty sharp. I mean, you may like that. It's it's fine, but I personally like a, a softer look. So what I'm going to do is instead of going back in with that same pink shade that I've been using for the crease, I'm going to go into a slightly darker pink shade just to kind of add a like a, a step up in transition. So I'm going to go into this Arabian Nights palette and take this darker fuchsia shade. It's just like here's what they look like side by side. So here's the pink shade and the other palette that I've been using and then here's this shade. So yeah, just a slight 
like step up. So I'm gonna take that on a smaller brush. So let's use this little doodad from the rose quartz. Like that's another thing I don't like about these kits. Like there's too many that look the exact same. Like they're the exact same kind of cut and they're not even a very good cut. Like I'm gonna hold my brush like pretty much parallel with the ground. So instead of coming down here and holding it at an angle or coming up here, I'm gonna hold it straight out at first for placement because I don't want it to go too high or too low. I want it to be in a very specific place. So I'm just gonna work right where I see that harshness. So for an inner corner highlight, let's go into, let's go into this Pure Magic palette. Let's just take, I don't know, this little like peachy champagne shader there. It looks kind of pretty in the pan, but whenever I swatched it, can we please stand? Whenever I swatched it, it looked pretty dry. So I'm just gonna take on a little brush like this. And I did spray the brush just so like the finishes don't clash of like a dry shimmer and then the wet shimmer. Like I want them all to fuse together. But something I'm seeing right now is that like it still looks too carved and too cut and harsh like going into the tear duct. So this is how I would combat that. So instead of just putting it and just like placing it right there in the inner corner and calling it quits, what I like to do is actually take a little bit of product and actually fuse it up into the eyelid shade. Just so it all kind of halos together. I'm actually gonna take this like shimmery light blue in here. It's like a periwinkle blue, a periwinkle? I don't know, like a robin's egg blue. And let's just put that right on top. Just, we're just trying to be different it's still a little bit brighter, but again, I'm gonna bring this in and kind of put it in the inner third, just to transition that inner corner brightness into the blue. Oh my God, it's taking me like 45 minutes to do my eyeshadow. Okay, so moving on to eyeliner. So I actually have two. I may put one on each side just to showcase things I've talked about in previous product fails videos. So this one was actually sent to me. This is the Milani Infinite Liquid Eyeliner. I tried this in my full face Milani video back in December and I think I got a dud. Like I don't think this product is actually bad because it does have some pretty good reviews. But it's very sticky. Like mine is very sticky and goopy and weird. And the brush tip on it, it I don't understand what's happening. Like it's so black and rich and I really wanna make it work, but the brush on it, I just, I can't get it to work. So yeah, we're gonna use that on one side. And then on the other side, I'm gonna use this Inglot AMC Gel Liner in the shade 77. It's just a jet black. And I've heard so many people rave about this. Like not even just regular consumers, but like celebrity makeup artists who have this in their kit. And everyone talks about how budge proof this is and when it sets, it sets and it doesn't move. But on me, it transfers to my eyelid every single time. So we're gonna start off with the Milani eyeliner and it's just, oh, it's just so goopy. Okay, so there's that side. I held my breath that entire time, but yeah, it's all like clumped up in my lashes. So yeah, mascara is gonna be a fun time. But while it's wet, I'm gonna go ahead and take a lash comb like this. Like this is just a metal lash comb. And I'm just gonna pull through and try to get the eyeliner out of it just because like I said, when it comes to mascara, this is gonna go ahead and dry and it's just not gonna layer very well. So yeah, on the other side, I'm gonna go ahead and use the Inglot Gel Liner just to show you pigmentation and stuff. Like, it's such a rich jet black. Like, I wanna like this so bad. I got this on Amazon. Maybe, maybe it was a fake. Like, maybe this is just not the actual Inglot Gel Liner. Maybe I just need to buy from Inglot themselves. But yeah, I have no issues with application whatsoever. It's super rich and smooth and creamy. It doesn't tug or pull. My only real issue is with the wear. So instead of jumping into mascara now, I'm actually gonna jump into my skin prep and go ahead and let that be drying and absorbing so that by the time I actually move into primer and foundation and stuff like that, everything's had time to just kind of zhuzh and do its thing. So let's just go ahead and move on to eyebrows and also mascara before we move into face products. So for mascara, I have this Volume Flash Scandalized Mascara from Rimmel and Rimmel and their mascaras just need to get a grip and their eyeshadows and their, their a lot of things. We got this big old Mamma Jamma wand on here. It's real large and in charge and clunky. And you would think where it's so big and large and in charge that it would actually do some volumizing and thickening and stuff, but it's just so, puny it's just not very volumizing or super thickening or you know lengthening or anything it really just it, it defines and separates way too much without the balance of the volume and the length also this milani eyeliner is so wet and shiny looking Ugh. so moving on to eyebrows so i had this eyebrow pencil from the aoa studio line from shop miss a this is the sculpting brow pencil i have two different shades but it's very much trying to be like the anastasia brow definer where it's kind of 3d it's a triangle shape it's kind of chunky but i just don't like this kind of a pencil in general like the shape of it's just not precise enough to where you can get in there and make hair like strokes and it's just not good for precision but also the formula for this is just so stiff that it actually pulls my brow hairs out like there are actual brow hairs stuck in the pencil where it pulled them out. I'm gonna try to be 
so gentle and so light-handed. Oh, there it comes. Oh my God, that's like three. So moving on to face products now. So I have a horrible primer. And with most products I don't like, I'm usually like, oh, you know, some people may like it. It's just not for me. But this is one that I just don't see this working for anyone. This is the Face Shop's Gold Collagen Ampule Makeup Base with SPF 30. So this is a Korean makeup product. This makes my skin look like a ghost. It is so greasy and white casty and ashy. Like it, I don't know what it's trying to be. And plus it, it, it's called an ampule makeup base. An ampule is like a serum. So is it a serum? Is it a skincare product or is it a makeup product? We don't know. The packaging though is beautiful. Like this looks so bougie and high end. Like this looks like something you would find in Sephora. It's so nice. I wouldn't really call it gold. Like it just looks like a really crappy sunscreen. Never sinks in and absorbs. Like look from my hand to my like what am I doing to myself? It's just like you can move it for days. Like it just... <laughs> Ugh. So we're gonna go with a very small amount of this. Keep in mind that Koreans, they look for different things in products. Like they want to whiten their, like a lot of them anyway, want to whiten their skin out. Like they want that super pale, porcelain looking complexion. I actually had a client one time that came in and she had this beautiful like olivey, tan complexion, like had the most beautiful skin tone. Like I would kill for her skin tone and her complexion. And she wanted to use a foundation that was like, five shades lighter than her skin tone. Like she didn't want to be that tan because she didn't think it was part of her culture. Like that's not what they define as beauty for whatever reason. I'm just gonna go ahead and pat this in. So we were able to make it work by using a very little amount. So moving on to foundation. So I really, really dread this because it's a matte foundation. Like it's a super matte foundation. And I do have some drier textures on my skin today. Like I have some kind of scabbier blemishes. So that with a matte foundation just they shouldn't cross each other. So number one, my tip and suggestion would be if you have acne prone skin, like if you're prone to getting blemishes that are scabby or dry or whatever, just don't use a matte foundation. A hydrating or more, more dewy foundation will be so much more flattering, but this one especially, I just don't like. This is the Koki Full Cover Foundation, but this is super matte. I have heard some people with super oily skin say that they love this and that it wears really well on them, but I have oily skin and I just, I'm not like a typical oily skin person. It just, things don't work for me the same way they do most oily skin people. But with this, it looks so makeup-y and thick and heavy on my skin. It settles and cracks into lines and pores and just, it looks like a thick layer of paint on my skin. So my little hack for trying to make this work, if you have to, if you're in a predicament where you just have to make it work, is to mix it in with an oil. And an oil is gonna kind of hydrate the foundation. It's gonna kind of, I don't know, add some dewiness to it and make it more spreadable, more movable, and just, I don't know, sit better on the skin normally. I'm just gonna mix a pump of this in. And I'm also gonna apply it with a sponge. I'm not gonna apply it with a brush. A matte foundation and a brush, I just, I don't see how people do it. I'm also gonna apply a pretty light amount of this. So this is pretty full coverage. Like I wouldn't say it's like super, super full right off the bat. Like as you can see, you can still see my blemishes just with the first layer. But I mean, it's a it's a decent coverage foundation. Moving on to concealer. So this is one that I actually haven't put on my skin, but I've, I've only swatched it, but I don't have a very good feeling about it. This is the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Glow Concealer. I actually got this to compare it to the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer, which I still may do, but this is the lightest shade. This is a shade, I don't even know, it's it's a lightest shade, but this is so dark. Like, what is that? That's like, that's like tan. I do want to see what it looks like initially, so I'm going to go ahead and apply it as is. There's what the first layer looked like. It, it blends out really fast, but it just doesn't really give you all that great coverage. So I'm going to go ahead and apply some more to try to build it up, because I'm sure it will build up a little bit, but here's my hack for concealers that are too dark for your under eye area. So I love this little LA Girl HD Pro Conceal in the shade, what is this called? Fair White Corrector. I love customizing and mixing shades, and like, you know, using white foundation mixers or darkening foundation mixers and, you know, really customizing your perfect shade. But I'm just gonna swap a little bit on, and this is gonna mix with that concealer and just whiten it a little bit. So you can also do this, like, if your foundation's a little bit too dark, like if you don't want to go in with an actual concealer for like the center of your face or something, just go in with the white. All right, so I'm back with powder, bronzer, and blush, and I didn't apply any setting powder yet because especially with a matte foundation like this, like I just feel like if you set every square inch of your face, it's just too much powder. It's just way too cakey, way too makeup-y. So moving on to some highlighter. So I actually have two different types of highlighter. So I have these Koki. <laughs> I'm sorry, Koki. These are the soft glow highlighters from Koki, and 
I don't know what these are. Like, I don't know if these are a cream, if they're a powder. Like, to the touch, they feel like a cream. Like, they're really creamy and, you know, almost wet feeling, but they don't apply the way a typical cream highlighter would. But they also don't apply right with a brush or your sponge or your fingers. Like, I don't know how to make these work. I'm applied the way that I would a typical cream highlighter, which would be with a stippling brush. But, yeah, there's what Heavenly looks like. And it's just... It's just so dry looking. So I'm gonna go on top with Rosie just to show you another color in action. So that's that ethereal pink one. But yeah, they just, they're all kind of too dark for me and they don't really mesh with my skin. And they're not super frosty or shimmery, but they still end up just looking like, they, they emphasize my skin's texture way too much. So now I'm gonna go in and what I would normally do with a powder highlighter is apply it with like a fan brush or something. So I'm gonna go in to that heavenly shade again. So that's about the sixth layer and I can finally see it. Like I can kind of see like a dewiness to my skin, but it's just, it's just not a very good formula. So these, like I can make it work. Like this looks fine. It's not the worst thing ever. So on the other side, I have another Milani product. This is the Milani Celestial Highlighter Palette. And I'm pretty sure this is still available. I wasn't sure if this was like a limited edition Christmas holiday thing, but I'm pretty sure this is still available on the Milani website anyway. But these are so bad. On the skin, they're just way too chunky and glittery and sparkly. And they just, they, they're very mirror-like. Like they're very reflective and wet looking, but not in a very flattering way. Like they almost look too greasy and shiny. Again, like these colors are so wonky. Like I don't really see them being better for deeper skin tones or fair skin tones. Like I, I don't really know who the demographic for this is. And I even tried them on my eyes as like a cream eyeshadow and they creased and faded and just melted off. Like there's just, there's no good purpose for them, but they look so pretty. Let's put them down here. Yeah, like the colors look so pretty. And like I've mixed them together. I've tried to make them work. Ugh, I'm just gonna mix a couple together. I don't, I don't really know. And this is just like pulling my foundation. It's dragging. It's just, it's stretching everything underneath it. Let's try it with my finger. I think this is the way that I did it in my video, in my full face Milani video. Let's just pack it on. But I will say whenever I swatch it, like I feel like I can never get the glitter, like the chunks of sparkle off my hand. Like after I wash it like 15 times, it's still there. So yeah, really reflective, very mirror-like, but not in a good way. But if I absolutely had to make it work, I would probably just go with the powder highlighter on top and just allow that to be the base where it is very like chunky and sparkly and it's just kind of pulling and stretching the foundation and blush and whatnot underneath. I'm just gonna go back in with the brush I use for my blush and just stipple right on top just to kind of fuse the two together and to kind of eliminate some of the frost. Moving on to some setting powder now. So I have this number seven translucent perfect light loose powder and this isn't a bad product but it's definitely better for people with dry skin. So if you're someone that has dry skin and you're afraid of powder then this would be a really good powder for you but for me every time I wear this I get greasy and shiny and oily throughout the day and it just my makeup does not stay intact. But here's <gasps> all over my clean shirt. I was gonna wear this again tomorrow. Here's what it looks like. It's very, very soft and finely milled. And like, it's a really high quality feeling powder. Like it's, it's a really nice powder. It's just not for oily skin. To make this work, I'm probably gonna use a powder puff. But I find that whenever I use a powder puff, it makes things like, it's like the powder just, it sets my makeup way better. So I'm just gonna go under my eyes. And also because I'm using a matte foundation, as I said earlier, I'm not gonna set every square inch of my face. I'm just gonna set all the areas that the powder cheek products didn't touch. So I'm back there as my face done. So I did my lower lash line and my lips off camera. So here's what we look like with the full face of product fails. And I feel like we did make it look pretty presentable. Like it actually doesn't look all that bad. I mean, the, the eyes are a little gaudy for my liking, but the face looks pretty good. Like it looks pretty smooth, even though the process took me quite a while. Like I don't know how long this video is gonna be, but in real time, all this took me like two and a half hours. So it wasn't easy, it wasn't fun, but I think we made it work. Hopefully I shared some hacks and techniques and tips and tricks to help you at home if you come across the issues I came across today and to kind of help combat those and just, you know, trial and error. Like everything's just trial and error. So if something doesn't work out easily, you know, you just gotta, you just gotta trust the process and find ways to make it work. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. And I will see you guys in the next one.